G'day guys, we're the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry team and uh, we've chosen Brief 2 today. So Matt, Aidan and Quinn. Through our approach, we've applied two behavioural insights frameworks. The 4D framework is applied across our whole approach, guiding us through a robust and complete behavioural intervention process. You will see it appear in the top right corner um, to indicate which stage of the 4Ds we are in throughout the presentation. For the design phase, um, the design phase covers our proposed interventions and makes up the main body of our presentation. For this stage, you will see that we've applied the EAST framework to clearly set out and step us through the full process for our two strategies, ensuring that they're applying behavioral insights all across the way. The first D is discover, which is simply about defining the problem and the end goal of the intervention. So for this brief, it is simply that not many are currently reporting their emissions. We want to leverage behavioural insights to motivate wine and wine grape producers to voluntarily share their business emissions data. It is here that we'd also like to quickly note that the brief talks about a discussion to open up the emissions reporting frameworks to all growers and producers, um, not just sustainable wine grower members. Um, we recommend and assume this as it'll make the entire process much easier for producers and growers. However, the effectiveness of our interventions is not limited by this if it does not end up being the case. So, on to the diagnosis. So the diagnosis phase is critical to a good intervention. If you misdiagnose the problem, behavior, you risk your intervention missing the point entirely and thus being ineffective. So for diagnosis, we spent a lot of time stepping out the whole user journey and figuring out exactly where in the process um, the problem occurs and what the behavioral issue was. Through our research in both reading about the wine industry, as well as the discussions we had here at the Nudgeathon, we concluded that the main issue was actually getting people to collect and input their data. So people are well aware of the need or good of reporting their data. The heat is already coming with climate change and increased regulatory pressures. What people are less clear about is what actually goes into the process. This led to our key identified barrier, which is on screen now, which is about perceptions surrounding the time and effort reporting requires. People are either not clear at all on what is required, or they believe the process is far more difficult than it actually is. When you combine this complexity and confusion with all the other pressures that wine growers are facing, it's no wonder not many report or sign up. They're not going to sit there and figure out the whole process for reporting. It's just not a priority right now. It only encourages sticking with the status quo by status quo and default option, which is not currently reporting. So based on the pain points that we've identified, um, we've chosen two interventions that we believe complement each other in addressing the uh, identified challenges, however, that are also co are capable of standing alone if required. So the first um, intervention is a letter to be provided to growers and producers, and then the second is a quick guide that's intended to replace the current 12-page brochure um, that explains the process of uploading data. Um, so noting that we're not uh, seeking to raise awareness um, with these artifacts, rather we're trying to fast track a process that most growers um, and producers have already accepted as part of their future. So it's intended that these will be sent together via either um, email or letter uh, as deemed appropriate to capture the widest uh, breadth of audience as possible and sent at tax time um, when say, uh, reporting is already salient and um, uh, the data required is actually on hand making the process easier. So moving on to the design stage, given that it appears that there's already awareness of Wine Australia's desire to have growers and producers share their data, the letter is not intended to raise awareness generally, but rather to improve the clarity of the messaging. Um, the letter highlights the simplicity of the process of uploading data and that there is already a significant number of people sharing this data. So in terms of examining it um, through the EAST framework, the letter takes advantage of the framing effect to make the act of reporting appear simple and easy. Language such as with just a few simple steps frames the act of reporting as simple, easy, and non-time consuming. Um, in attractive, addressing the reader by name increases the salience of the message as targeted and personalized interventions are more likely to gain attention engage and engagement. The letter will be signed off by someone such as the CEO of Wine Australia um, to further draw attention and leverage the messenger effect again. 
social, indicating that others do this behavior, make it sound like a large amount have signed up already, um, more than 800, frames it as a descriptive norm, motivating people to be part of the ideal, idealized in-group. And timely, timely is addressed in two ways. Firstly, the costs of not reporting are brought into the present to help tackle time inconsistency. We do this by highlighting the currency of climate change through mentioning tangible impacts, such as we heard from Sarah yesterday. Um, and secondly, uh, as mentioned earlier, we're gonna send these out during tax time. Um, so in terms of the one pager, currently producers are, and growers are interested in reporting their emissions are directed towards various um, dispersed and inconsistent resources, such as the 12 page brochure by, uh, by the South Australian wine industry that if we're being brutally honest, read like a school textbook and deter even those that are motivated to share their data away from doing it. The current 12 pager contains information overload which serves to heighten the status quo bias which currently is not reporting data. The brochure also mixes information about reporting and the benefits of reporting. While both elements are valuable, the combination of the two makes the document overly complex and difficult to follow, causing aversion and behavioral friction preventing the process um, being commenced. So again, examining this through the EAST framework, the quick guide is pur purposefully concise to reduce the hassle factor. It clarifies immediate next steps and provides time-saving tips. Language such as with just a few simple steps frames the process as simpler than it is currently perceived. Um, attractive, the guide is short and draws attention with its design, including icons that are catch the eye and draw readers to different points. The steps are also highlighted in, bo in bold, um, so readers can easily navigate to the information they, they require. Social, the guide applies framing to make it social using language such as you'll have joined hundreds of other uh, growers in, and in the collective effort. And timely, the guide provides suggestions for individuals to reduce the burden of reporting later by collecting required information throughout the year, making the process easier. So onto the fourth and final D, the delivery of it. We saw evaluation of these interventions being central to the delivery, delivery of it. So you can actually measure the impact of what's happening because otherwise, what's the point? You're gonna spend money on time on something, you're not gonna know if you're actually gonna have an impact. So we've developed our interventions with a randomized uh, control trial in mind. Within this, we'll have a control group, which has neither of the quick guide or the letter of all the behavioral interventions. It will just have the 12 page brochure and some generic letter um, written by someone in Wine Australia, I suppose. Uh, then we'll have two groups with um, a mix of one behavioral intervention and its complementary other one. And then we'll have the last um, group, which will have uh, both the quick guide and the behavior intervention letter put together to see if there's an interaction effect between the two as well. Uh, we also uh, design these interventions with feasibility as a key component in mind. Making sure that we've designed is actually practical and is constrained in what sort of burden it would place on um, Sustainable Wines Australia was um, in the forefront of our minds because a lot of nudges and interventions are typically low cost, soft touch, easy to implement. And this is just a bit of paper. It's an email, you lick a stamp, send it, pretty easy, low admin costs, pretty much just someone has to go to the printer and send it away. Uh, on top of that, the low cost as well, it's just postage, I suppose. Um, they're also scalable and modular. So they can be used in tandem with any other sort of interventions you might want to use in the future or anything else that's presented today. And they're very adaptable in that way. And again, we design it with evaluation in mind. And as nudges typically are, we design this in a way that it doesn't restrict people's choice. It just changes the choice architecture a little bit. And rather than making grand changes, it um, just nudges them towards perhaps getting along with it. So to wrap it up, we've utilized two BI frameworks. We've had the four Ds as a broad consumption um, conceptual framework. We use EAST to address the specific behaviors that we wanted to address. And we identified the key points to be addressed in the user journey to make it, to move it more from the thinking to the doing. And we've done this using a letter and a quick guide la laden with um, BI concepts. So with all this cut down, made it a bit simpler, hopefully people like Alex can start getting from whining to more whining. <laughs>